Salam alaykum. Justice is an Islamic principle. It's an Islamic value. We're expected, we're encouraged, we're reminded, we're ordered to have justice in all things, to be just in all matters, to be just with all people in all situations. First and foremost, to be just with Allah, the creator of the entire universe. How can you not worship Allah? How can you not worship your creator? Be just. We're encouraged to be just with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the messenger of the Prophet chosen by God for all times, for all places, for all humanity. So how can you not take him as your leader, and as your role model? Be just. Be just with your parents. They gave birth to you. They raised you as a child. They took care of you when you couldn't take care of yourself. Be just. Be respectful towards them. Be obedient towards them. Take good care of them. Be polite with them. Even when you disagree with them, smile. Even when you disagree with them, serve them. Even when you disagree with them, do so in a manner that's polite and gentle. Be just with your neighbors, look out for them. Be just with the poor, with the needy, with the homeless, with the widowed. Take care of them, help them as much as you can. Be just with yourself, take care of your needs in a way that's pleasing to Allah. Take care of your soul by nourishing it. Take care of your heart, take care of your mind, take care of your body, take care of your health, your physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional health. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Relay these words, but it's a hadith putsi, meaning it's Allah's words relayed to us by the Prophet Muhammad. It's very powerful. He says, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altahu baynakum muharraman fala taladamu. God is saying, Indeed, I have made injustice or oppression forbidden for me. God is saying that I can't oppress people. I made it a rule that I don't oppress people. I'm not unjust towards anyone. And I've made it between you forbidden. It's haram. You are not allowed to oppress each other. You are not allowed to treat each other unjustly. So don't do so. Very powerful words. How can you oppress someone else when God is saying he can't do that? Of course, nobody can stop Allah from doing whatever he wants to do. Right? The creator of the entire universe can do as he wills. He makes the laws. He makes the rules. But he says injustice. Injustice is of all type. Do not go. And they might happen in this world. But then the king of kings, the judge of all judges, on the day of judgment will have final verdict, right? We will all be held accountable for every one of our words and our deeds or actions that it has been in front of Allah. And on that day, there's no, no dhulm, there's no oppression, no dhulm and yom, there's no injustice on that day. So how dare you be oppressive towards people? How dare you treat them unjustly again and again, purposefully? How dare you be a tyrant, a fascist, a dictator? How dare you occupy other people and enslave other people? Torture, kill other people? Rounding people up, putting them in camps? Treating them as subhuman? These are God-given rights. God says you can't treat other people unjustly, so how dare you? Who are you? I would not want to be you on the day of judgment. There are three ways to respond to someone, right? There's three ways to act in a situation. Either you can reciprocate with justice, or you can transgress and be oppressive or unjust towards somebody. The third way is to show mercy, right? These are three ways of acting. The beautiful thing is Allah has already said to us now that injustice There are three ways to act in a situation. There are three ways to respond to somebody else. Right? You can respond in a way that's oppressive. You can transgress towards someone else. You can respond to people with justice, or you can be merciful, whether they're unjust to you or not. There are three ways to respond to other people. There are three ways to act in a situation. You can act with justice. You can transgress and oppress and be unjust towards other people. And the third way is you can be merciful. So that even if they are unjust towards you, even if someone's oppressing you, you forgive them, you act mercifully towards them. It's beautiful that Allah has already told us that He never is unjust. He never transgresses and of course does not allow us to do so and encourages us not to do so. So the two ways of acting are to be just, to reciprocate, right, to get retribution, to get revenge, the way that's equal, or to be merciful. And God encourages us to be merciful and encourages us to forgive. On the Day of Judgment, Allah will only act two ways. He will either treat people justly giving them the punishment that they deserve, but on an ounce more than what they deserve, where you'll treat them mercifully, forgiving them, even if they have sinned. It's fortunate for us that Allah has decided that His mercy outweighs His wrath. Because or else, we have all been sinning day and night. We commit injustices, small and big, sins, small and big, day and night, every day of our lives. But Allah overlooks many. But Allah, but Allah overlooks much of what we do. It doesn't hold us to account for every little thing, although we could. It would be just to do so, but Allah is merciful. So all praise belongs to Allah, alhamdulillah for that. And that characteristic, we try our best to apply that in our lives as well.
to overlook people's faults, to have mercy towards them, to forgive them again and again, right? to be the better person, not to be petty and holding people to every single thing, to assume the best of other people as much as you can. And whether we are able to be forgiving or merciful or not, regardless, we never ever cross the line of being unjust to transgress towards other people. Allah says in the Quran, in a very powerful, very beautiful ayah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ شُوَدَاءَ بِالْقِسْطِ وَلَا يَجْمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا يَعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَنُونَ Oh, you believe. Be steadfast. Be committed to justice for Allah. And don't let people swerve you from justice. And fear Allah. Indeed, Allah knows everything that you do. Allah also says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُنُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ O you believe, be upright in justice, witnessing for Allah, even if it's against your own selves, your own parents, your own family. Basically, do what's right, because truth and falsehood, justice and injustice, they're bigger than you and me. Their values, their principles, their ideals. Try to line yourself up so that you are someone of truth, someone of justice. Right? Don't let your ego get in the way of you doing the right thing, being just. Interestingly, this verse is inscribed on the entrance of the Harvard Law Library. It's considered to be one of the greatest expressions of justice ever. If you don't already know, this Sunday, here in Houston at the NRG Center, there's a protest. The Prime Minister of India, Modi, is coming, and tens of thousands of people will be there welcoming him. We're hoping hundreds, if not thousands, will be there to bring awareness to the fact that he is responsible for some of the biggest injustices in our times. India is oppressing the Kashmiris, similar to the way the Israelis have been oppressing the Palestinians. And both these conflicts go back decades. We're hoping that protesting this Sunday is going to get our wider society to be more aware of what's going on in Kashmir. So I hope you guys will join us, inshallah.